Okay, in this section we're going to talk about concavity and also the second derivative test. I have two drawings here. Each of these drawings will represent the line y equal f of x. So, first of all, if you have a line that's concave up, that means that the graph is opening up, and if you have a concave down, that means the graph is opening down. Now, let's take a look at it a little bit more closely here, what's actually happening. We're going to analyze f prime of x. Now, f prime of x would be considered the slope of the original line. That's what I have represented in blue, and what I did was I took a snapshot at different places along the graph. And what we can notice about this is that the slopes are gradually getting bigger. So the slope is negative here, but then when it moves to here, it's closer to zero. So that means it got bigger. This is a bigger slope now, it's positive, and then that's even a steeper slope. So we can see that the first derivative is increasing. So if you see the first derivative is increasing as we go through, which it is here, then we know that the original function is concave up on that particular interval. Now likewise, if you have concave down, that means that the derivative is decreasing. Again, you have a positive slope here, it's closer to zero, got smaller, now it's negative, now it's more negative. The first derivative is decreasing. So when you see that happening on the original graph, it's going to be uh, concave down. Now what the second derivative test does is it analyzes the slope of the first derivative. Remember the first derivative test said that if the first derivative was greater than zero, that means that the original function is going to be increasing. Well, if you're analyzing the slope of a first derivative, the slope of the first derivative is now the second derivative. So the second derivative test says that if the second derivative is greater than zero, then we say that it's going to be concave up. So this is a way that you can do it algebraically without drawing a graph. You're going to take the second derivative, you're going to do the same sign chart that you did for the first derivative, and wherever you see a plus sign, that means it's going to be concave up. If you see a negative sign anywhere, if the second derivative is less than zero, that means the graph is going to be concave down, and then you don't need to actually have the graph drawn in order to do that. Now, we have another definition in this section, and it's called the uh, inflection point. Now, the inflection point is where you see the concavity changing. So it might be changing from concave up to concave down or, or likewise. So when that concavity changes, then you have what's called an inflection point. So what kind of, what would the graph look like at that point? Let me draw a sketch for you right here. If you have this kind of graph, that would be a place where it would have an inflection point. The first part of the graph would be a concave, would be concave down to here, but then the concavity changes and now it's going to be concave up. So the way that you're going to look for inflection points is when you look at your table that you're drawing, if you see a plus and a minus or a minus to plus on your second derivative chart, okay, that's going to tell you where you have an inflection point. So how we're going to find that algebraically, we're going to do some examples uh, later on in this section. You have an, if you have an inflection point, you find that by either taking the second derivative, setting equal to zero, or it's where the second derivative does not exist or is undefined. So remember that for this situation here, if, if you put c in there and it's undefined in the second derivative, then it has to be defined on the original one. Otherwise, if it's not on the graph itself, that means it doesn't exist at all and it's not actually going to be an inflection point. So this holds true here. Second derivative at c does not exist or undefined, but it still has to be defined on the original f of x graph that you have. So if that's the case, then Again, there's two different situations where you could have an inflection point. So this is real similar to what we did before with the first derivative test, but now we're just analyzing the second derivative, but we're still making tables and charts and we're looking at pluses and minuses. We're just now looking at it with the second derivative.